Okay, so it's going to be a bunch of nonsense as it is every day, but I have kind of whatever, something funny. So before, um, I was just going to come on here like hours ago and just bitch and put on my makeup, but I'm like, no, let me just put on a face. And then I ended up making dinner and whatever. And I put on like a cute outfit and I had this cute like flower thing in my hair. I had some pictures and it looked really cute. Um, but it's, it's not that it's uncomfortable. It just feels really loose. But I had on like a cute dress and whatever. I was feeling very Priscilla Presley and then I saw the pictures and that's not how it turned out even though I'll, I'll post one on Instagram anyway. But I always go back to like same shit. I love, I, there was a phase I went in like three years ago. All I bought from Goodwill were long sleeve like small gray shirts. This one has a pocket I think and a fucking shit stain apparently right here. Um, but do you ever want, like, see, like, and I'm not comparing myself to a celebrity by any means, but, or, like, somebody that you see all the time, and you're just, like, can you fucking, like, wear your hair a different way? Like, I just want to see your, like, you know what I mean? And that's how I feel about myself, because it was a really cute outfit, but I don't, like, I just want to be comfortable, or I don't know what it is, like, no matter what, like, my hair looks like shit right now, it definitely looked way cuter, but whatever. Whenever I was in fifth grade, I had this blue jacket, and I'm pretty sure it was from Kmart or Walmart. It was probably like an off-brand Adidas or FUBU off-brand, and it had these like stripes at the cuff and at the bottom, and it probably said like all-star, you know what I mean? And I wore that jacket every single day, and a low ponytail, like straight like that, low ponytail every single day. It was either that or I had this pink panther hoodie, it was navy, and it had the pink pink panther on it every single day I mean I didn't wear the same shirt but that jacket was covering it up every day and I just remember my mom being like can you please like wear your hair a different way or can you please like just put on a different fucking shirt and it's just funny that I um I had that picture of me wearing that hoodie actually but I think that was in uh sixth grade Anyway, that's just how I felt today, because even though I don't feel like I look that great, I'm comfortable. So, not that I woke up with the greatest of ambition today. I woke up super fucking late because I've just been so exhausted and work is draining again. Um, so, I mean, if you guys ever worked at a bar or been into a bar period, you see that the entire back bar is covered in glasses, all shapes of glasses, sizes, and bottles. So, we've been pretty slow the last couple days, and... As I've just been getting really irritated because the last couple of shifts that I've worked, I get either a call or the day shift person is like, oh, here's another cleaning list, a laundry list of shit to do. And I just, I'm at that point where, I mean, I really love it, but sometimes I have to snatch it back where I can't hide my facial expression and sometimes shit, shit comes out of my mouth too fast. But, and I know that they're probably frustrated too because they have to do other stuff too, but I'm really just like, we do not get paid for this. If, if somebody's going to come at me because a toilet's clogged, what the fuck am I supposed to do about that? I'm not talking about customers. I'm talking about management. Um, because I get asked, like, by other coworkers, oh, did you check the bathroom? Yeah, I do a sweep through. But if there's a shit smear all over the toilet, I don't get paid for that. Like, if, if, a, if an establishment has enough money to, like, redo the entire exterior and interior I think there's someone we can hire to flush a toilet or maybe do a little duty brush because I'm sorry my money I, I'm not getting paid enough to do that and I'm very sorry but uh the other night I'm because our place has cameras everywhere which I do love to a certain point but a lot of times I know that it's just like me and my co or me and my co me and my best friend we're kind of co-workers we don't work together but she was telling me about where she works, how, like, there's so many cameras that it's uncomfortable. And I think if you've worked anywhere with cameras, you'd be there walking by your manager's office and you can see the computer and, like, where everything is because, you know, you're kind of like, whatever. Honestly, I'm so over that. I've worked here so long. I don't give a fuck. Like, I know that I'm not doing anything crazy. Whenever I first noticed the cameras, I'd be so, like, whatever, I'd be counting my money. I'd be like, one, two, three. Now I'm just like, you know what, if they think I'm stealing, then they're nuts. Like, you know, fire me, whatever. But... It almost gets to the point of like really uncomfortable because it's no secret like now day and age with cameras like you don't just have to be at work to be watching the cameras. So I know that and this is kind of what my coworker, or my god I keep wanting to say my coworker, my friend was saying because her place that she works at they just got a bunch of new upgraded cameras so now they're like super HD and I think where she works too it's a little bit more of like um a safety issue with customers also like if 
if somebody steals somebody's car in the parking lot, there's cameras on, and a lot of other establishments around her job, they can be like, hey, there was so and so, this happened, like, can I see your cameras? It's not really like that with us because there's not really businesses around where I work. But she was telling me this story, and I'm just going on a complete fucking tangent, but she was telling me the story that there was a um, ex-worker at her job and basically was able to sue what, either the or the restaurant or somebody because somebody, an old manager that gotten fired, has they have access to the cameras from their home and they were just straight up like watching some of the female bartenders or waitresses while they were at home. And that's so fucking uncomfortable. Now, do I think they're doing it that at my job? No. Um, they'd be real fucking bored watching me on camera because I'd be like this. Because like, the TV is really high on the ceiling, on the wall. But if you're sitting at a bar, you know you're watching it. But I'm like watching fucking, you know, Mrs. Doubtfire. I literally did that for like three shifts straight because that's all that was on TNT. But you're going to watch me stare at my phone. But, you know, it's really uncomfortable, especially when you know that it's a really slow night. Um, but anyway, so two nights in a row, I get a phone call. Oh, well, since it's so busy, can you sweep the entire dining room? And it was a couple other things, but I'm just like, for what? For what? Like, I mean, I did it because I was bored. And that's what pisses me off, too. I'm such a fucking, like, marshmallow bitch. I just do it because I need a job. Like, what am I going to say over the phone? Nope, click, like, whatever. I mean, I literally had an hour left of my shift before I could close. So I'm like, you know, whatever, I'll sweep up. And I just hate it because do you ever get in that mode where you start, not that you care too much, but you realize, like, you're doing too much? Because I, I like cleaning. Being organized and making things look nice and clean, it's very therapeutic to me. And it just helps kind of, like, whatever weird thing you have in your head because your life's a fucking mess so if you clean you feel better so I start sweeping the fucking um dining room floor I'm moving chairs I'm I'm sweeping up nasty old french fries and shit but then it doesn't stop I start sweeping the fucking dance floor I sweep the entire behind the bar I sweep under every chair then I start wiping shit down and then at, it clicks and it, you're like you're at work like what the fuck you know what I mean it, it just kind of starts to get irritating but I benefit, I do stuff at work that benefits me, but anyway, so what the fuck am I talking about? Um, but that's that. So I, I don't really have a dilemma in this situation. I don't know how to, it just makes me feel, and I, I'm going to go through this quick. And I, it makes me feel like I should go through this quick, but uh, whenever it comes to family right now, it's really hard because since my family is so small, so... I had actually run into my family. Now, we live really close to this, like, dive bar kind of place. And actually, like, last month, me and Matt had gone out and had dinner. And then we were trying to bar hop. I think I told you guys in that video, we made it to one bar. And then we went um, to the last one before we went home. And we ran into uh, my aunt my, and two of my cousins. And they happened to be at this bar. And I was kind of laughing. I'm like, oh, are you guys here for Meatloaf Monday? Because literally, that's what, you know. And they were like, yeah. And they always have a trivia night. And I was like, oh, that's cool. So we sat and talked for a little bit. And they had told me like, oh, we try to do this every Monday now. Well, I'm not always off on a Monday. Neither is Matt. So I'm like, okay, that's so cool. Like, you know, if it happens, it happens. Well, um, like a couple more times we ran in and it's always as they're leaving. I'm like, well, Monday's our only day to run errands. Like that's getting groceries done. That's just trying to get everything done ready for the week. That's the only day that we usually have off. So we ran it a couple times and then this last Monday I had seen my aunt and I'm like, oh, this is perfect because I wanted to know what was happening for Easter. And I know that it sounds so stupid because clearly a phone works both ways, um, but I am never in the loop with anything. So I was just kind of thinking like, what do I need to make? You know, I'm kind of excited. Like it's, it's a kind of like a dread and an excitement. And I'm just being completely honest because I mean, I think my thinking is really logical um, it's not that I'm not close to my family, but it's depressing as fuck. Like, and I know, and I hate, I'm very self-aware that in a sense it seems very selfish, but I don't think of it as me being like, I just don't want to see my family. I'm dealing with so much alone that it just, it's so fucking difficult sometimes to even talk to my friend and get a sentence out, let alone going to a full family, like a full family. Like, there's nobody left. That's my point. So I'm like, cool. It's kind of, yeah, whatever. So my aunt, um... I was like, oh, so what time? Because I think most families, like, whatever, you have one place that you meet up every year, whether it's Easter, Christmas, Thanksgiving. And I was like, what time is everybody going to grandma's house? And she was like, actually, we're all going, um, it's like an hour away to her family's side. And I, I've 
realize like a lot of holidays now since my uncle has passed they all just go and I mean they like my aunt and both my cousins and my grandma have been going over there because I think it's just kind of you know bigger whatever just kind of like get out of the realm of like maybe not thinking about it and I get it but I was like oh like I we don't have the car like that car we don't have the car power to go over there we don't have the whatever like and it's also a little bit like weird but um I was just kind of like oh and I have no right to be like uncomfortable or like mad about that and I'm, I'm not but I'm just like okay well kind of like then I didn't say this but kind of like then don't ex don't expect to see us and not in a mean way whatsoever but I we can't physically drive two hours away it's at least an hour and 45 minutes okay especially on a holiday the car's not gonna make it it just it is what it is and um with work and everything like that so I was like fuck um and she goes but I'll get your number from your mom and I'm like I'm right here you have my number like I what the like I know and it's not ew. I just feel so bad because I'm so bad with my words you guys but in that situation I'm just like oh okay because again I'm just really not that close with them so I don't know how to be like girl you have my number the fuck message me you know what I mean but I'm just like whatever and it's always awkward because they were getting ready to leave and I could tell it's almost like forcing a conversation with us and not in a bad way but kind of just like whatever so I'm at home today and I'm trying to like I'm just in a funky mood already um that's just literally how I feel all the time but I go to get the mail and the second time I've gone to get the mail, there's a fucking wasp in the mailbox. I feel like it's some bad omen. There's like wasps everywhere. But I see that there's one letter and I can already tell I'm like, it's from my grandma. So I'm so fucking confused. I'm like, why? I mean, I'm thinking like, does she? because she does send out like letters to everybody during Christmas, Easter, whatever. But I'm like, why do we have a letter? So I read it and it's basically just telling me what she's doing for Easter. And I, I felt so sad. And so confused reading this. And I'm like, when did you send this? Did you are like, because my aunt did tell me this. She was like, hey, um, if grandma doesn't end up coming with us two hours away, she'll be at home. And I go, perfect. I go, please let me know. Because if grandma's not at home, I will go over there and like have dinner with her for Easter. You know what I mean? Like, so let me know. But in the, in the letter, it was like, you know, we're going to mass at 10 a.m., and I don't know about any of you guys, so I just do not have a great relationship with church. Um, I have no problem with the religion or anything like that. But ever since I was a child, I feel like a, like this is, this is so corny, not like a demon straight up, but I have always gotten sick in church. Whenever I was a kid, we'd always sit in the um, first or second pew and I would puke every single time. Church gives me the skeebies. I went to Catholic school. We had to go to church twice a week, constantly. Um, I was in Bible school. Bible school wasn't that bad. That wasn't like, didn't skeeve me out. But I just, I'm not a church person. Um, I don't have, and I'm not going to compare it to anything like PTSD, not like that, but I just don't like it. Um, I also, it has nothing to do with this. It's not like, I don't want to see people I used to go to Catholic school. That's very weird. I'm like, I know what y'all bitches be doing. I see you around town. Um, it just, it creeps me out, dude. I used to have these, not, not visions, but in Catholic school, we'd be sitting there and every time the priest does with the wine and the, the Eucharist and he's like, oh, whatever he does, I would imagine everything would go gray, like black and white. And then I would just imagine like blood spewing everywhere, which is probably like from the movies that I watch or some crazy shit. And it would always make church so much more interesting. Or you know what the creepy part is? Back whenever I was a kid, I would get so scared. And this is before really like mass shootings were whatever. I mean, maybe it was whenever I was like in my teens or something, but I would always get nervous that somebody would run in and just like start gunning everybody down. That's so dark, I know. But I just, I always just, it just gave me like whatever. And it has nothing, like you can worship God in your own way and I'm not trying to like save ass or anything because trust me I don't care and I don't care what religion you are as long as you don't push it I don't care if you worship fruit I just like don't just don't push it on me um and I also see the thing that pisses me off with work too we're closed on Easter Sunday and we always have bands on Sunday and that would have been mine so of course they had to change it and make the band on Saturday because god forbid you know we don't have a fucking band and if it was the same hours that'd be great but they're making it late so I will not get off work till super late 
and it doesn't like no matter it's not even an excuse but no matter what you say like hey I, I will be working really late like there's probably just no chance in hell I will be up at 8 a.m. getting ready and then going finding a ride to church and it makes me feel like crap because they're just like okay honey like I feel like at this point there's no even point of like trying to explain myself because no matter what I say I swear to god I could say I'm going in for like toe surgery I can't make it to church and I would still feel bad because I just feel like my family is very religious and my whole life growing up, um, and I've talked about this before, like if you have to go to mass, like Easter or Sunday, the, the time your parents or my mom would get us ready was so fucking annoying because it would be a fight. It would be a screaming match. Get your fucking dress on. You don't touch your hair. Allah, like literally screaming. And then as soon as we walk into church, we're like red eyed from trying not to like break down but then you know just to make sure your family looks great for church you know what i mean so it's like the, it never felt right it's like we were being forced to look like a happy family to go to church to appease my family not for what it's supposed to be that you're there you know obviously for jesus or god or whatever the fuck you know it's supposed to be a good whatever but it wasn't it was just so it was just like it was so fake to me and that is not what it's supposed to be at all you know it, it was just like traumatizing for real and it, it just like whenever I think of a church I think of those times in my life I don't think of you know it's not doesn't mean what it you know what it means because whenever I was growing up I never had an issue with like bible uh classes that was one of the classes like we had math history and then it was like Jesus time you know same amount of time so that was really funny for me um and I said this before my very first uh public school that I went to whenever we were going over the bullshit like we needed folders for you know like red is math blue is english green is science and those are the colors they always fucking are all right don't fuck with me yellow is history i suppose but um i'm like and what folder is like bible class and i remember i didn't say it in class but i asked one of the girls and they were like what and i remember somebody being like you can't even talk about jesus in public school and i'm like okay but yeah so i do feel bad about that um and the thing is like it's hard I don't know. It's, it's just really hard. It's, it's really hard to combat like feeling like shit because I am overworked a lot right now and I'm overworked in my mind. Like I, I literally almost started crying today because I, I could kind of smell garlic. I'm like, I have just been in a really bad spot for the last almost two years. Definitely. Um, and it's just hard to take time and try to think about yourself and what you're going through because all I can think about is how hard of a time my family's going through, but I can't put effort in this. And like, it's, it's just, I'm useless unless I am okay. You know what I mean? Like I can conjure up only a certain amount till like, I get through the day and then I'm fucking exhausted. Like I am exhausted. I'm trying to deal with my head problems, both my dizziness and my mental problems. Um, just a lot of shit that I'm going through and I'm sick of feeling like shit about it. So, uh, that's what that's about. Um, now going into something, if you guys are even uh, still here, I have a question for people that are in Austin, Texas, please. If you are close to the Bergstrom Airport, I believe, I'm trying to find a hotel motel. Now I've looked all around online um, and I, th I don't really remember staying in a hotel. I remember like in Oklahoma, we would stay in one because that's the halfway point. But please give me options. Um, cheap options. Because the only and the thing that I can't fucking stand is that our flight is a later flight. So we're not going to, even if we get a hotel, we're probably not going to get there till like 9 or 10 o'clock at night. And checkout is always 11 or noon. So I'm annoyed, but I don't want to have to land. And my where my mom lives now, um, it's way farther than, so my brother still does live in Round Rock, I believe, but my mom doesn't. So I don't want her to have to drive two hours out of her way to pick us. You know what I mean? So it's a disaster. So I just want to be able to get off the plane, go to sleep, and then have her take the time to pick us up in the morning. So if anybody has any suggestions, um, I don't care if it's cheap. I don't care if it's little ghetto. I, I have stayed in motels around here that are literally just for prostitutes, which is fine. Do you? That's great. But as long as there's like a great lock on the door and it's under 100 bucks, please let me know. Because I just can't justify spending a hundred dollars on a hotel room to sleep like I get that's the point but I can't justify it also like I'm trying to pay off this credit card that I have and it just sucks like adulting fucking blows cock so I'm trying to get at least that paid off before I go because honestly 
for this vacation, for this very, very, very seldom time that I get to get, get the fuck away from here, I'm just trying to have my credit card paid off. And then whenever I go down there, I will go balls, balls fucking deep. And then whenever I come back, I'll deal with it then. So I'm just trying really hard to save for something to do down there. Like maybe just have a nice dinner. Like I said, I just want something. I just want to feel like a fucking adult and be like, I can pay for something um, but yeah, just give me suggestions if there's a hotel closest to the airport, if you guys suggest Ubering or taking a cab, because um, it is shady down there. It is fucking shady. So I think we'll probably Uber. Um, I've had horrible dilemmas with cab drivers in Texas, and it's funny because my mom used to work actually kind of for, well, not really, but kind of, but um, they try to like stiff you out of money for sure, and it's just difficult because... I had one, I think I told you guys this, the last time I was in Texas, I was waiting in the snow, it was like December, or no, it was January, because I went down there for New Year's, and my uh, Uber driver couldn't find me, and cussed me out on the phone and left, so, anyway, I just kind of wanted to vent, I might come on here again, I'm not really sure, um, I think I just needed to get a couple things off my chest, I made some dinner, uh, tomorrow's gonna be balls at work, but I'm just trying to stay calm, I have somebody else helping me out, because tomorrow's Good Friday, so I probably will be very busy, but um, as I have in my mind, the next two days, no matter what I make, that is going toward my credit card, and then this check is going toward utilities, and then I'm hoping that pretty much everything else I have before the trip, or days that I work before the trip, I can just save, save, save. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm really excited, I'm nervous, and I just want to be calm. I just want to have, like, I just want to be calm. I just want to have a good time. I don't even care if I'm on my period. I just want to have a good time. I love you guys very much. See you.